<laughs> I will talk about machine learning models on mobile devices. So it's not a topic about to train the model on a mobile device. Even these devices are powerful and I think you can fly to the moon with them. So, but they are not really made for um, machine learning training on it. So um, the battery will train or something. So the talk is about using machine learning models on a mobile device. The question is, why should I do this? Um, what's the reason? Um, I, have, I have a big server farm, could set up everything, and, and I have my machine learning model already. First reason, I think it's uh, the privacy. So you don't have to um, send the data over the internet, like an image or something. It could stay on the mobile phone. Um, one good example is for the iPhone, for example, it does uh, face recognition of yourself and all your family on a mobile phone instead of sending the data out of, of in the internet. The other thing is availability. So um, you, always, you don't need an internet connection to send the data. If you have a server somewhere, you need some um, connection. For example, um, I will show later on something with an elephant. You're on safari and don't have an internet connection. Elephant stands in front of you. You don't know if it's an elephant. I think you will do it, but um, yeah. But the availability, um, it's also um, image data needs lots of, it, it's huge data, so um, you need a fast connection to send the data to this. And this is third point, speed. So you do it directly on a mobile phone. This is faster than sending um, yeah, the image to the internet, waiting two seconds before you get a result back. Even if you have a re uh, yeah, fast um, server farm, that's, that's one thing. And a fourth point which also comes up is like, um, you can scale on the mobile devices. So instead of scaling your, your um, server farm, I always come up with server farm, sorry. Um, instead of scaling up this, you just scale this on a mobile phone itself. So that's the three, four main reasons why you should do um, yeah, machine learning the models on the mobile device. Question is, what models? You can do images, as I came up with an example, text for natural language processing, for example, and more. I think nearly everyone, every uh, model. So this is an example for CoreML, which I go um, later on or next, and just pick up some of them. So we have for neural networks, the convolutional um, yeah, models, this you can use uh, Cafe or Keras, uh, random forest, also different models, multi-class classification, logic regression, all of this is possible to run on a mobile device. Okay, question is how? Um, as I mentioned, Core ML is one, TensorFlow Lite, and there are also others like Cafe to Go um, from uh, Facebook, and I think there are more. Um, but I'm focusing here now on Core ML and also TensorFlow Lite. Um, Core ML. It's from Apple. They announced it uh, last year on the WWDC um, yeah, 2017. And it's running on iOS, Mac OS, uh, TV OS, and Watch OS, so in the um, Apple world. You also need a MacBook to, for the development for this stuff, so it's more on, on the Apple side focused. And the way it's working, it's um, you have in the middle, you have Core ML. And instead of directly talking to the hardware, you have the accelerator and the BNNS, which stands for Basic Neural Network Subroutines. So I don't know if you have been in the talk before. There's like, yeah, with uh, GPU and, and um, CPU. So this is more focused on the GPU. So if the model has something which doesn't need really run on the GPU, um, Core ML will choose this part, otherwise it uses the metal performance shader, which is um, like OpenGL or something like this on the Apple side um, to directly uh, talk to the GPU. On top you have your application, 
And there's also another layer between, depending on if you're using images, then there's the vision framework or for natural language, then we have this one and also gameplay kit is also something. So you just write your application using, for example, the vision framework, which then talks to core ML and depending on your model and everything goes down to the hardware. And um, yeah, Apple came up with new mobile phones, but the, the, the range of the mobile phones itself is very small if you compare it to the Android part. So they know their hardware, they know how to, to make it faster and everything if you compare it on, on this side. TensorFlow Lite, it's from Google. It's based on TensorFlow Mobile, which is part of TensorFlow. So, um, I was playing around with TensorFlow Mobile two years ago, something like this. So you have also your model um, and build this together with an app and then uh, it runs uh, yeah, on a mobile device. With TensorFlow Lite, they made it more um, yeah, nicer, I would say. So it's more focused on the mobile part. With TensorFlow Mobile itself, it was more like taking the whole um, TensorFlow part and bring it down to, to one part and, and then you have it on, on the mobile phone, light. That's the version, light, yeah. Um, one thing at the moment with TensorFlow Lite, it, it doesn't support all the operations from TensorFlow, so also a small or not a full part of it. But it runs on Android, iOS, and also they are supporting the Raspberry Pi. So they really focus on, on uh, small embedded devices here. And the way it's working like this is on, yeah, on the left side for an Android app, you have your TensorFlow Lite file, which is part of the application. Then there's an, a Java API, which wraps the C++ API itself. Then you have the, inter the interpreter with uh, calls the operations. As I said, not every operation is available. And depending on the uh, Android device itself, it uh, uses the Android Neural Network API. This is a low-level API, which also could be used to um, program directly with, with the Android phone. But there's like this wrap, some wrapping up on this. On the iOS part, yeah, you only have a C++ API for this, um, which then could be used for uh, Swift one part or uh, Objective-C. So this is already part of, of um, Xcode to have um, C++ inside of it. But you only have the interpreter for this, so no directly hardware um, connection to it, which makes it a little bit slower on this part. But um, yeah, one, one thing is you, use the same um, TensorFlow file for it. So if you want to have some app which behaves on the Android and um, iOS phone the same, then um, this is a good solution. Okay, um, let's start with a demo. I, so this is the result of the demo. Let's see which one I'm choosing. I start first with the, right, let's run it, this is the next one. So this is the um, iOS version of it, and the idea of this app is you have three buttons. So instead of running around here and then trying to figure out to find an elephant, which is a little bit difficult, um, I decided, okay, just uh, use uh, three images for this and when I click on this image the image is loaded and then the recognition will start. So with 95% it's an African elephant. Um, let's see, oh yeah, you can see it here also. 4.2% is a Tusker and 0.4% an Indian elephant and no percent a uh, moped. So this depends on the data. But 95% is clear it's an African elephant, so... 97% a daisy, clear. Interesting part is that this is a strawberry. I think you can really uh, see that's a raspberry, 
but um, this depends on the data. I will talk later about this. Okay. And the same thing here with um, Android. So on this part, it's 71% tasker with the task. Okay. This one is Daisy, 90%. And this case, a pineapple. So there's something wrong with, with the raspberry, as we'll go later on. Tensively, yeah, right, right, um, right. So, left part is uh, Core ML version, which uses a different, uh, the same uh, model. No, not the same model. Um, it's Inception v3. I will go on this, and on the right side, it's a TensorFlow Lite model. And as you can see, there's some difference between it. If I would use um, on the iOS version the TensorFlow Lite, it will be the same result. Okay, so this one. As I said, um, yeah, Inception v3, it's for object detection. Um, Google Brain came up with this. There's a paper available on the archive, and it uses the, what's it, intern, no, image net, l uh, large scale visual uh, recognition challenge from 2012. So every uh, model are mostly based on this. The reason for this is to, to make it comparable. Um, so if you have the V2 version also based on this, I think the V4 also. So this is for the reason to make it comparable. <clears throat> and you have 1,000 classes. And someone decided to select 1,000 classes. So at the end, you end up with um, three different kinds of elephants. The African, the um, Indian, and also the Tasker. But there's no Raspberry Pi. Uh, no, no Raspberry. So instead of a Raspberry, they're using a strawberry, which looks similar for this. And depending on which uh, the, uh, yeah, source you take, it's 96.5%. Uh, the result will be in the top five and everything. So this is Inception with three. Um, for CoreML, you just go on, on the page and you can download it. And then uh, track and drop this into your project. So this is the project for the V3, just track and drop inside of this. And uh, Xcode itself generates a class for this with some uh, methods. I will show this now. So this is um, when, the, when the app is starting. Here I have the Inception V3 class itself and just take the model as name. Then I create a core ML request with a uh, yeah, completion handler. In this case, the uh, method is called res handler. And this request, I just add into um, a request array in this case. So I just fill up this one. Here I have the method, the res handler method itself, gets a result back. And depending on the result, I can um, take the confidence, in this case, how uh, the percentage for the recognition, and also the identifier, in this case, for example, African elephant. And then I just uh, write the label and it's done. And the question is now, how do I activate this? This is the button click I'm using for it. So this is just a few on it. When I click on this button, I have this method here. It's an IB action. Then I call the predict method. Itself takes the image I'm clicking on and adds this image in a request handler. 
And on this request handler, I just perform, um, you have my handler, perform the self request, which I added the handlers itself. So then the handlers will be called, the handlers will um, change the text on, on, the, on the app itself, and done. So that's an easy way to, to implement some, um, yeah, the machine learning model itself. Um, I'm using the vision framework for this, so instead of waiting for a click or something, I can use also the camera, and then just send always the, the latest picture to the machine learning model, get a prediction, and get a result back. So this core ML on the iPhone with TensorFlow Lite. One second. I have my TensorFlow Lite file and add this in the assets folder. And then I call the interpreter. So the iOS code I showed, this is the complete code. This is, this is everything you need. Um, here I skipped some part. So loading the model is just going to the asset file, loading a file, sending a result back, and this goes into the interpreter. So at the moment um, with TensorFlow Lite, it's also, um, you have to do some extra work for it, um, but the Google people are working on this to make it a little bit uh, easier. Okay, I have the interpreter for this. Then here's the on-click, same action like, and then I'll just call a predict method. And the predict method itself also takes the image. And here's also the convert bitmap to byte buffer. It's an own written uh, method, which takes the image and converts this with byte shifting to an image buffer. This, I skipped this part because this is more byte shifting and everything and, but just to mention, uh, I'm skipping here some parts, it's a little bit more um, handwriting for TensorFlow Lite at the moment. So the image buffer is um, an input field here for the TF Lite run and the label pro so you also need a labels file, which is sorted by um, all the images you, you found. Therefore, get the size, and this is the output. So you have the label pro, and then I just run the TensorFlow light on this. It takes the image and then fills up the label pro. In the method itself, I just run through all the label sizes as an, with an index. This, is this one. And then depending on a label pro has the percentage value. This method is just uh, finding the highest value. So it looks more complicated than it is. Um, yet, takes the percentage. Here are the labels. Oh, sorry. And at the end, Yeah, at the end I have the label with the name. So in this case it was Tasker for the um, TensorFlow light. Time is here. Um, the strawberry problem. As I said, there are no data um, about a raspberry. So, and the strawberry maybe looks more like, um, yeah, raspberry looks more like with the color like a strawberry. Um, Reason for this, no data are available. So normal way is also, um, I don't just want to take um, the Inception V3 as, as is there, um, because maybe I have some, some products which I want to scan. And I don't want to identify some shoes which look maybe like an elephant and say, okay, this is this uh, shoe, and if it looks like, I don't know, a strawberry, then they are the red shoes or something like this. So therefore, I want to retrain um, the models. Um, I will later on send the slides. I put it on, on Twitter, the slides, and they will have um, also the link to, to every page I, where the link should be. And 
yeah, transfer learning. It's um, on the TensorFlow page there, you can find something about it. And um, it's based on an already trained model. So I take my Inception V3 model with all the co uh, layers you already have, and just the, the top part of it is used for the retraining. So in the beginning of, of all the layers, um, you have something like lines, circles, and everything. This will get to put together to maybe some face or something. And the last layer is about, OK, this looks like an elephant, so it's an elephant. And when you retrain everything, you just skip the last part of it and put your own um, images on this. Um, the good thing about it, you don't need like, um, I don't know, there are more than one million images for whole, um, what, what you use for the image net. You only need 20, up to 20 images per product, for example. And it only takes also half an hour to retrain the complete model. So instead of, I don't know, never, never run an in, um, in Inception V3 for retraining, but this will take um, days on, on fast, on a hard, yeah, big machine. So this should run half an hour on a normal um, laptop. Um, I have half an hour, but um, I skipped this part. So I don't want to retrain here and do nothing half an hour. So I thought, OK. Um, Let's do an XOR example, just to, to show how you can train a model, or yeah, train a model, and then use this in CoreML or TensorFlow Lite. Just to recapture XOR, um, so if you have zero and zero, it will be zero. Same with one and one will be zero, and otherwise it will one. So this is zero, zero, this is one, one. And here we have the parts with 0, 1, and 1, 0. Therefore, I'm using a Keras model. Um, the good thing about Keras is based on TensorFlow, so, um, and it looks a little bit easier than uh, do this in, um, yeah, in TensorFlow itself. And I should have here, um, yeah, right. Is the size OK? What's the first word? <laughs> OK. So this is the model. Um, I have lots of imports. Um, this was fast. OK. Let's go. So just imports, creating a session. And here, I have my tra here are my training data. So um, 0, 0 will be 0, 1, 1 will be also 0, and otherwise it will be 1. So I have training data and target data for this. Let's run this. And that's the main part now of, of the Keras model. So that's also you um, understand. I think it's, I understand it better if I see it on, on Keras. So you, we have it in a, a sequence and just add two models to this, a dense layer with eight hidden layers between, input dimension of two. So we have, um, yeah, zero, zero, this is the input dimension. As activation, I'm using sigmoid, this is the S curve, but could also be ReLU, for example. And then this is the output layer, which is only um, one layer and also activation of sigmoid, and Keras itself knows um, what, what um, the previous layer was. So here, the input uh, dimension will also be eight, because no, two, two, eight, two. We will see. Okay, and then I have um, a loss function and an optimizer. Um, what was it? I wrote it down. Stochastic gradient descent, yeah with a learning rate of one. I run this, and here we have the model itself. OK, I have an input of two, eight. OK, eight as input and one output. So that's our model. And um, now I run this with the training data and target data, and 
in this case it will be um, 2000 epochs, so it's running through. It's starting with 0 0.25 with the loss function, and it's already done. And here I can run the result. So at the end, the loss function is um, 0 0.02. And these are our results. So for 0, 0, it will be um, here at 0, 0, 3, out of 9, 5, 9, 5, and 5. But if you round it, so this is the rounding function, 0, 1, 1, 0. So now I've learned a uh, model with this. I just add the data in, I can add uh, 0, 0, and as a the prediction for this will be 0. This part here is about saving all this stuff. I skip this. So this is, yeah, with Epochs 2000. And here are the data again. Right, and for saving the model, um, there's Core ML tools, which uses, in this case, Keras, but um, PyTorch is available, Cafe, and so on, depending on the model. Um, there's also TensorFlow Core ML. That's the reason I came up with uh, TensorFlow Lite. So um, I was once retraining um, some model with some uh, chocolate bars and everything. And I've used the inception model, and then I thought, OK, now I'm, I have now an, a TensorFlow at the end. And how do I transfer TensorFlow to Core ML? And this was in the beginning of, year, of the year, on January, on December, Google released um, TensorFlow Core ML tools. So I was happy I could just transform TensorFlow model into Core ML for this example. And on the TensorFlow Lite itself, it's uh, TOCO, the TensorFlow Lite optimizer, optimizing converter. So you just have a TensorFlow model and converts this into TensorFlow Lite model, depending on the operations you are using. So maybe there are some operations uh, you use inside of your TensorFlow model, it will not work, but um, yeah. And to convert this, you have to freeze the model and all this stuff, but this is going too deep now. Okay, let's take a look at the XOR demo. Um, I have this one now, this one, doesn't matter, run it, run, okay, so it's just um, all four possibilities and here you can see 003 in this case, 9595 and so on. I'm using now the trained model and show the result for this. Um, the same also possible on the iPhone. Uh, here we are, right. And as you can see, there are the same values for this. Where is it here? Should be. No, isn't. What happened? Don't know. Ah, I, I run I run this morning. Um, when I save this, it saves into the file. Okay. But it should be the same because I'm um, running on the, on the um, Jupyter Notebook. I write the same result normally out of this. And Oh yeah, there's also something um, what you realize every time I r run the Jupyter with the Keras model, the result will always differ. And the reason for it is because the random values in the beginning will be a little bit different and therefore the result will be, yeah, depending on between 0, 0, 2 and 5 or something like this, so, right. But nearly the same. Okay, so this is the result here, and it's much easier now. So this is the um, iOS version. I just um, set 
For each text, I run the predict, a predict method for all four possibilities. The predict method itself gets the values, in this case A, B, otherwise it wouldn't fit on the screen. And, um, right. This looks a little bit complicated. It's also complicated in first beginning if you don't know what you're doing. You need a multi-array for this, a machine learning multi-array. This is the new thing. Um, the reason for this, we have an, uh, yeah, an array as an, with an array and as an input, and therefore you need this model uh, or this class, and then you just set the values A, B for zero and one. And these are the input data for an XOR input, which is also um, part of the model, so uh, which uh, X, or, X code is generating. Here you have the prediction method also from the model generated, called a predict, and the result is sending back. So in this case, 0 0.03 or something like this. TensorFlow Lite, also I load the model, the XOR TensorFlow Lite file, and have here for all, um, for, um, yeah, or data, test data, the, the calls. Same here. In this case, I need an input field, so therefore I set the AB value. As you can see, it's a float with an array in, uh, in an array. And the output itself is also an array in an array with um, predefined zero, so I have a value inside of this. Then I run it, and at the end, I just um, convert it into a string and show the result. So this looks a little bit easier. The only complicated part is reading the TensorFlow Lite file, but um, if you have done it once, you just use it again. That's one part. Um, so this is the, yeah, how you use it. Um, what's also coming up, like, um, who have been here in the previous talk with the quantis yeah, quantization? This is um, something which is, I think, important for um, if you use it on a mobile phone. So quantization depends on, this is the uh, American version, the English version has an S on it. Um, I use it from the Apple page, so I'm real, that's the reason it's American. And it's a discrete set of values, so um, the idea is, um, I have an example later on. So you have different kind of values, and then you just um, make groups out of this. So you have, for example, from 0 to uh, 0, 0.0 to 1.0, and there you, depending on how many um, groups you are uh, building, you start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or something, or 8 going on. And this reduces the size of the um, model itself. So TensorFlow Lite already uh, supports 8-bit for this, and with CoreML2, which is new since um, this year, so on the WWDC 2018, Apple announced this. You have also the weight quantization for this. And the idea is, so this is the um, Inception V3 model. And I just took a small part of this, out of this. So these are all the convolutional layers between this. And for the calculation of an image, you start with an image. It, for example, you start with a dog. Then you have at the end, it will be a dog. And there are some, some random values maybe between. Next image is a cat. Then you run through and recognize, okay, this is not a dog, this is a cat, so there's the back propagation, and therefore you're changing the weights between all the layers. And um, normally you use for this a float value with this 32 bits. And therefore you get a precise, a precise um, yeah, model on this. 
but with the quantization you can reduce this. So um, you just use 16 bit of this. So you lose a little bit on, on, the, on the quality itself, but the, the size will be um, shrinked down on, on half of this. So a model itself depends on, on the layers it's, it's using. In this case, I just um, co uh, counted all, all the layers while, while you're transforming this Inception V3 into different, um, yeah, and different quantized uh, models. So um, I think they have 94 convolutional um, layers between. So, and then you have to think about how many weights there are going. So the amount of the layers is one thing and also the size of the layers. The amount you don't want to, to, to uh, reduce, but if you um, reduce from 32 to 16 bit, then it's nearly half of it. And with um, the Core ML tool, you also possible to use um, 8 bit or 4 bit, 2 bit, even 1 bit is also possible, which doesn't make sense on an um, image recognition. Oh, wait, I have an example for this. So what I've done was um, just taking wait, this example here and just run it. So I just took the Inception V3 model and reduced it to 16-bit, 8-bit and 4-bit. So this is now this, the nearly the same app and I added um, four uh, different text layers also. So this is calling the original one, 95%. This is 16 by, yeah, 16 bit version. This is the eight bit version and this is the four bit version. So even the four bit version is showing um, this as an elephant. I think I should show it here somewhere, yeah. But with only 29%. And the interesting part is the daisy. So it's 97% with normal one, 16, 8% is getting to um, 98%. So you're gaining a little bit uh, quality even. And this is now 2% pillow. Yeah, if you close your eyes, you will see a pillow maybe. And of course, uh, this, the raspberry is still a strawberry, but here also 93%. Oh, cauliflower, okay. So four bit doesn't really make sense. And, but eight bit, as you can see, you get a, also better quality at, at this. And um, let me show it here. Can you see this? So this is the original one. There's 94.7 megabyte is the first size of it. Wait, maybe, maybe, maybe I can. Is this, does everyone see this number? Um, here it's also, also small, sorry. So this is the original one, 94.7. Um, let's go to the 16-bit version. It's 47, so less than half of it, and still the same quality. Depending on um, with the 8-bit, oh, this is linear, this one. The 8-bit has 23 per, uh, megabyte only, so you reduce it nearly one-third of, of size of it, or less than one-third. Yeah, and the 4-bit, it's 12 megabyte, but it's not really, um, useful, I would say, with um, image recognition. But maybe with the XOR model or something, ah, I should try it with this one. But I, I think you get it, the idea of, of with this. And um, I think it's important for, for if you're using it on a mobile device. So um, you can also reload the, the models itself um, somewhere from the cloud or so. And if you download instead of 97 megabyte only what was the useful one? Eight, um, eight 
bit with 23, you really reduce the size. Also the app size if you download it. Right. Yeah, uh, summary. I showed why privacy, availability, and speed is, are, are three main reasons why you should use this on, on a mobile phone. How? Um, TensorFlow Lite, if you want to have it on uh, iOS and Android. It's a little bit more complicated to, to develop if you compare it with the Core ML um, itself. So you just track and drop it in the Core ML and it creates the classes for you. Right, but um, Google guys are already working on like um, for the image um, recognition. So, um, oh, I didn't show it. So I just take the image in, in Core ML as an input and depending on, independent on, on the size itself, um, they recognize what the model itself needs as an input. So when, I, when it's only, so Inception V3 needs 299 by 299 um, RGB image. And when I put in a big one, one or 640 by 480 or something, um, Core ML itself shrinks down the image. So you don't have to, to uh, think about the size. This is also interesting if you use the camera, you just um, use the latest screen, throw it in and don't have to calculate or uh, have to think about how to reduce the size. With TensorFlow Lite, you have to do it at the moment, but this is one, one thing where the Google guys are working on. Yeah, and the question is, what will you build on this? Maybe you're now interested into this, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.